Oxfam's deputy chief has resigned after a prostitution scandal involving aid workers. It's the exact opposite of what you'd expect from an international aid agency. Oxfam was accused of covering for staff who paid prostitutes in Haiti after the 2010 earthquake. Some are said to be under age. The scandals already claimed Oxfam's deputy chief executive, who quit after allegations of a cover-up threatened the NGO's funding. It was revealed that Charity had hired a country director in Haiti, despite known concerns about his prior conduct in Chad. But that country director, Roland Van Houwermeren, had worked for a number of charities in several countries, even before Chad or Haiti. A former colleague first blew the whistle on his behavior in 2004 when he worked in Liberia for UK charity Merlin, where he allegedly organized sex parties with local young women. That Oxfam failed to warn other NGOs about the allegations against its staff, allowing some of the accused to get jobs at other aid agencies. Those details were reported this week by Ben Parker, senior editor of the humanitarian news website, Erin. I'm curious where all of this starts because you have allegations made by a woman, allegations that date back many years. How do you go about corroborating all of that? I needed to find her uh, agreement to, to go on the record and I needed at least two other sources. So through friends of friends and uh, names that were dragged out of the past, we were able to get together three different individuals who could all confirm the facts of this case. What was interesting was that of many, many stories floating around in the sort of Me Too phenomenon, this one uh, and this individual, she definitely wanted um, to say her piece on the record. So she was able to connect me with her colleague at the time through a mutual friend who didn't want to go on the record, but at least was able to stand up um, the, the basic outlines of it. Where it got surprising, perhaps, was that the man who was sent to investigate her complaint uh, from the head office in London also agreed to speak. So that gave me that gave me a three-way uh, confirmation of of the story and of the facts. We have seen sort of in the in the days since the man at the center of these allegations has denied, in his words, some of the more salacious parts of it. Did you expect that? I expected he would have to come out of hiding. Um, and I think what's, uh, what's happened is that something that appeared to be normal to him and to some of his mates in these uh, remote and troubled places doesn't appear normal in the light of day in 2018. And I think he is now struggling with how to line up his past with the uh, expectations of the international media uh, today. What happens in the charity sector as a whole? We're now sure. seeing a reckoning. We're seeing it impacting fundraising. One group has said it will temporarily suspend funding uh, Oxfam product projects. Of course, it's a charity that relies on people to send money. What do you see that ripple effect being from the work that you're doing about the allegations being made and the ability of these charities to continue doing the good work that they should be doing? I think the charity sector, the nonprofit sector, uh, probably don't have a much worse problem than any other sector when it comes to sexual abuse, sexual exploitation. If you take oil and gas, or you take security, or you take even tourism, um, you would expect to find this kind of behavior by men traveling the world, being uh, sort of free of normal constraints, being a little bit outside the law. So what, what's particularly outrageous about this is that because they work in the charitable sector, they're betraying their principles and the principles which the public have come to trust them for, and they're taking advantage of the very vulnerable people that they claim to be helping. So this double, um, uh, this double ethical slam is what's going to hurt them uh, in the public imagination. Ben Parker, thanks very much.